Hey guys, Ben here, North Country Outdoor Guys. Um, finally getting around to um, doing a setup of my Dutchware Gear Chameleon hammock. I ordered this uh, on Dutch's Kickstarter. Uh, I think it was in February the Kickstarter went live. And I was one of the first 100 backers, so we got ours early. I haven't been able to get out. Uh, the weather hasn't really been cooperating up here in northern New York State. And it's kind of windy, so hopefully today, so hopefully uh, I can show you this without too much trouble. Um, I will uh, cut away to a description uh, of the various hammock uh, options available for the uh, <coughs> chameleon. It comes in three fabric weights, um, and then there's a whole bunch of options as far as whether you get a top cover, a bug net, uh, or whatnot. Um, I got the complete package from Dutch. Uh, I've had it for a while, just haven't been able to set it up. And it comes new with uh, these uh, new suspension that Dutch came up with, uh, the beetle buckles. So I'll show you those. Um, I'm running a two camera setup here, so hopefully I can uh, get some close ups while showing the whole setup uh, with a wide shot. Um, I am a, I still consider myself a novice at these things, so you're going to watch me fumbling around uh, setting the hammock up and trying to get the angles right and then I'll take you in for a close-up of all the features. So um, what you get in the, in the, so this is the hammock itself, it comes in a double uh, ended bishop sack. So you have that. Like I said, I ordered, uh, this is a top cover. Well, this is the bug net in here. The bug net comes in its own little sack. This is the top cover. I got the middle weight, I think it's 1.6 hexon. I'll, I'll, I'll double check. Um, in a brilliant blue, I believe it was for my hammock and then I got a titanium gray top cover figuring that when the light shines through a gray top cover it'll give me a nice uh, kind of cloudy day uh, appearance in the hammock as opposed to if you get a bright colored hammock uh, top cover or tarp and, and the sun shines through it you're gonna get hit with some like funky colors so I, I'd rather have a muted color for my top cover tarps. Uh, this is the peak shelf you actually have to take uh, one of the whipped ends apart to install the peak shelf. I am not going to do that uh, now because I'm, I'm a little hesitant on that. Um, and then you get two beetle buckles with the straps and they come with um, Dutchware Gear branded carabiners. Uh, one thing you need to know on these uh, beetle buckles is that beetle I think I'm using the right word. You, you want to be careful to put your carabiner on the right end, okay? Because one of these ends is smaller than the other. So you've got a loop sewn in here. It's hard to see there, but you got a loop sewn in that end, and you've got a loop sewn on this end. You want to put it in the bigger end because these buckles are one way specific. You can't switch switch the, the, the lines around. They won't hold if you don't have the strap set up in the right way. This is the beetle buckle. So I will set that up. Um, I'm probably going to have to review how to use it because it's, it's different um, and I want to make sure I'm doing it right. So I will review how to use that uh, before I get to that part. Um, but anyway, that is what's what I got. Uh, I believe it was two sixty something early bird. It's going to go up. They're not available on Dutch's website yet. He's still fulfilling the uh, Kickstarter orders. It was a massive success. Uh, success. He met all his stretch goals, so he's had to hire some new seamstresses, and they're really cranking them out. So hopefully, it will be available uh, soon on his website which is dutchwaregear.com I'll link to that um, but uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna set the hammock up and then I will put the bug net on oh the other thing you get <laughs> you'll see it later is there's some uh, elastic pullouts 
that clip onto the hammock. Um, so you're going to need a couple of stakes. Those don't come with the, with the hammock. And the, the cool thing about this hammock is it has no specific head or foot end. So you can uh, determine that when you set it up if you're more comfortable head right, feet left, or vice versa. You can figure that out with this hammock. It's not, it's not um, fixed like it would be, say, the, uh, in the Blackbird, my other hammock, where I have to have my head left and my feet right. Um, this is switched. This, this can be switched. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set the hammock up, and we'll go from there. I'll, then I'll put the, I think what I'll do is I'll put the bug net on, show you that up close. Uh, and then I will put the top cover on. I have not done either one of those yet, so that'll be interesting to see. So here we go. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so of course, just as I get ready to do this, the wind picks up. So hopefully it'll die back down. Uh, you saw me struggle in there a little bit. Um, took me a second to remember how to work those beetle buckles. Uh, I got it. Uh, I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Um, 
it's important when you set those up that the strap, the free end of the strap, be on top. And I'll show you that again up close. Uh, and then Dutch has said that you want your suspension as straight as possible. You don't want any twists in it uh, because of the way the buckles work. Um, so I'm going to go to the other camera. Here we are at camera two. Uh, that is an up close look at the beetle buckle. You can hang your suspension either with with the loop in front or the loop in back over here. Uh, either way, you can flip that around. Uh, doesn't matter. Um, that's kind of twisted. I should take that off of there. But uh, so here's the. This little netting here at the end is for when you put the bug net on. Um, the bug net zips all the way. I don't know if you can see this, but the bug net zips all the way up inside here. And then that little piece just helps keep the bugs out from the open end. Um, this is called the Vision Zipper. It's something Dutch has done himself. Um, these little clips along the outside are for your underquilt. You can clip there. They go along the outside there's one there um, this is where you can clip the little tie outs I'll show you those uh, so if you wanted to make this your head end or your foot end you could there's another clip for your under quilt there and that repeats on the other side I also got uh, as part of one of the extras this um, storage shelf here this um, ridge line organizer I'm not a big fan. It's very small and it just kind of slides all around because it just snaps on here. What I'm probably going to do is add a couple of prussic knots on here so I can pull that out and have it because you put something in there and it just kind of slides around. So I'm going to try to probably put on a couple of prussic knots on there to keep that where I want it. Uh, that would be a suggestion for Dutch to just throw a couple of those on there. Um, let's see. So yeah, over here. As you can see, I got the elastic shock cord out, but that's where your these little clips come on the shock cord, and they just clip on whatever side you need them on, and then you can adjust your shock cord here very easily from the hammock. If you want to loosen or tighten your tension up, you just pop these out. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but pop these out, and you can adjust them where you need them to be. Um, then you just run it down to your stake. Some some people got um, O-rings with theirs, like like you would have on a little key ring, uh, which could be helpful uh, if you didn't want to use it. Because I don't like the cord might have braid on that. Um, so that I mean I don't have this. Yeah, I got to monkey around with my heights and whatnot. But that's the hammock. Um, so I've got this set up where I would have my head here and my feet. So I'd be head right, feet left in this setup. Um, so like I said, I was gonna say I didn't. I skipped on. And inside you have these little clips, too, these little clips too, um, and that you can hang that bag, that peak line bag on here. And Dutch also has. Says there's more accessories coming. There's a bottle holder that can clip on there as well. Um, I've yet to try anything on here, so this is really my first time setting this up. Um, I'm going to try to get a close up of me working these buckles, but I don't know. That's not going to work because of the sun. Okay, I'm going to try to do this without a cameraman. Not entirely sure how well it's going to work. Now, like I said, this part, the free end of the, this is the free end of my strap. It's up underneath my bishop bag, but that needs to be on top. And you can, the way these things work is that if they're, the flatter they are, the better they move. So when you tilt it down, that's where all the tension comes from. But to adjust them, you got to kind of bend the buckle down towards you. And theoretically, you're supposed to be able to put your hand here. And your fingers on these little grips. 
I'm not see I'm not getting it. This perplexes me. I've watched videos on it and I still can't get it. When it's under load, I can't figure it out. So let's do it this way. Let's see if I can do it like this. It's, yeah, it's going to be hard to see. You're basically using your thumb as a pivot point here without a cameraman. This is really hard to do. And then when you pivot this, you can adjust the buckle back and forth, right? So. thing twists up a lot. I haven't had that experience with with other uh, other hammocks. I never had to worry about them twisting up. But this one it gets twisted inside out. I don't know how it happens. All right, here we go. All right, so let me get my beetle buckle back on here. This is going to be on top. So you can put your your continuous loop on like that, or you can put it on like that. Hopefully you can see that. It's hard. To, the sun is in my eyes here, so. For some reason, I like to go behind like this. So. Theoretically, if I tilt this buckle, there we go. Now I can, hopefully you can see that. Now if I tilt that buckle, I can move that suspension easily. And I'm just pulling on the end here to get it back up. And then when you're back like this, it won't move. So that's how that works. Hopefully I illustrate that. <coughs> I don't know how well I'm going to be able to do the bug net and whatnot because the uh, I'm not entirely sure where where the bug net starts Where I has it been on at? Guess I'm down in here. So I'm not sure if there's if this thing is symmetrical or or what the deal is. If I'm supposed to put this on a certain way, I don't know. So I keep tripping over my my. Uh, I'm not going to be able to see this, but I'll try it. My zipper's all lined up. All right, so I think let's go up inside of here. Find your. Well, hopefully, you can see. I don't know how well you don't see this, but the end of the zipper is here. I'm putting it on. Zipping it up. So these zippers are accessible from both sides of the hammock.
I had those on the wrong. I had those hooked on the wrong part. I had those hooked on the inside, so that makes zipping this up tricky. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to... I thought this was a two-way separating zipper. Okay, I got another set down here. Aha! I got another set down there. So... So there's two zippers on each end, one on each end, but two on each side. And make sure you got your right side zipping into your right side. This gets tricky. This gets tricky. All right. So those zippers are going to go down here. This zipper is going to go down. No, the zipper is going to go this way. I'm gonna figure it out. It's pretty good. This adds a whole new level to the uh, sophistication of the hammock, but it's very customizable. See, a lot of people who do these videos will probably set it up and, and work with it a while and uh, get real comfortable with it so that they look like pros when they have it, but. I'm doing it first time out of the bag so that you guys can get a sense of what you're going to have when you get home and you get your own. All right, so again, like everything with hammocks, once you get used to doing it, it speeds up the process. Um, peak shelf, I'm going to throw that in there just for out of the way. If, if, if you've used a dream hammock, this is very similar to how the dream hammocks are, are set up. Okay, so when you get in here, you're going to have to use your other zipper, which is the interesting part. This is a patent pending deal that Dutch has got going on these zippers because uh, you can get in and out either way uh, okay. gotta kinda look through your net figure out where your zipper is figure out they, they attach very easily alright so here now we're in business I got my zippers there I'm gonna come around this side Hopefully I didn't cross those zippers. Because that, that you can do. You could accidentally zipper one side in the wrong side. Then you'd be in a bit of a situation. So now I just gotta find my other zipper. Okay, here we go. So there's that. Now, one of my recommendations from doing this is going to be: don't put your your uh, tieouts on. Don't put your tieouts on until. Um, you've got your zippers all zipped up because otherwise you're going to be tripping over them. 
Um, a little close up of the tie out. So this clips on those little loops that are on the outside of the hammock. Now I had these clipped to the inside of the hammock, uh, which was not ideal because it was causing me issues. Um, so you want to clip these right over that little loops on the outside and then you can take your shot cord out of this little slot here and, and move it freely and then when you're ready to lock it down you just pull it down in there and it holds pretty good. So uh, so now I will go in, hopefully I'm getting the audio, uh, I'm going to go in close with the other camera. I'll throw that back in there. I'm going to throw the top cover in for now. Okay, so. Okay, I had these on the right side. So, here's the close-up of the, of the clip with your elastic cord. I just, I'm going to try to do this one-handed. It's on there pretty good. That's not going to happen. I can't get it over here. Um, so basically, you put your stake in, put it down, and you can adjust as needed. Um, here's your close up of your vision zipper. Okay, this is the zipper Paul Dutch gives me. So I can, I can, inside also has double pulls. This is tricky to do. So, you can, from inside you can get out on either side and those zippers are on both sides. Um, again, these are your quilt hooks. There's the chameleon logo quilt hook. It's got a lot of loose threads on it. That's not normally a Dutch thing. Normally they're pretty good about cleaning all that up, but uh, quilt hooks. Quilt hook here. So you got two quilt hooks. One there, one there. Then you're outside. These are your tie outs there. And now I zoom out a little bit. Tie out clip on here and here, or you can clip down here like I've got them, and then on the bottom of there, you have a quilt hook again and a quilt hook there. So, uh, I'm a little concerned about the ridge line rubbing on this net here. I don't, I don't think it's so bad as when you have the net in there but when it's bare that ridge line is rubbing right on this elastic here I don't know how well that's going to hold up in, over time uh, so let me set this down I'm going to put my other pull out out Likes to help. <coughs> and getting caught in tie outs is one of his favorite things. So if you just pull up on these, you're not going to be able to see this from back there, but pull up on those and it loosens them right up. Right, so my foot end looks a little low. So.
Why the bugs are out already? The sun's setting, so I gotta work quick. So there's a there's a wider shot of the hammock with the bug net in it. Um, <coughs> I try to get in it, but I have my mic and all that stuff in my pocket, so I don't know how well that's gonna work. So what I want to do now is I'm gonna take the bug net off and put the top cover on. Bug net. I'm gonna stuff that back in. Um, it's stuff sack. I'm not a winter camper, so uh, I don't know how much I'll be using the top cover, but I figured I, it's something I'd like to try maybe, or even just in the low, you know, like when I went down to Maha um, two years ago in the spring, um, it got down to 28, something like that, and I think it would have been nice to have the top cover. I didn't need the bug net, so <laughs> there was no snow, but at night it was cold, so it would have been nice to have the top cover. So, the thing with this top cover, let me come around to camera side here. The thing with the top cover is this top cover is reversible so that you can, um, depending on which way you want to lay. So, the fabric has two different sides. You probably can't tell that, but one side's a little shinier than the other. Again, same setup. Now, the difference is on the, on the one end of the cover, you have this mesh vent so that you don't get condensation built up inside the hammock. And usually that's uh, up near your head end. So I'm going to figure out how I want to put this in. And this is going to be, I think, a little trickier. Maybe not. I'm not entirely sure I'm going to do it correctly the first time. But uh, I'm going to put it shiny side down and see if that works. And if it doesn't, we'll 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 re we'll retackle that. Okay. So head end is here. Shiny side down. I have no idea if this is right. This is going to be an experimental thing. There's some tricky geometry going on here with the fabric. So. Okay, I got one zipper on. That went a little quicker than the last time. There's a method to this. You just gotta figure it out. Find your zipper in. And you kind of go. I'm going by feel. I can't really see it with the sun shining in my face. My glasses have darkened up. Um, so I'm just kind of getting the zipper together and then feeling around for the end of the zipper inside the hammock and then slipping it in. Like I say, they do. They, they do seem to go in. Quite easily. Try not to zipper the the uh, netting in there. On the top. All right. So let's see if I got this right. Okay, so that's one side. We got this side coming down. So I want to get. No, see, one mistake I made there was I did not get my ridge line under the top cover. 
Now when you're up when you're up under there, you're gonna want to get that up over your ridge line. So there we go. Get that up over the ridge line. And find your zipper again, get your zipper all lined back up. Apologize for the wind noise. I'm later than I want it to be with this because of the weather, and it's I just decided to pull the trigger and take the chances with the wind. Hopefully this is usable footage. Alright, I got the zipper back in there, I believe. Not. It is a little tricky. Okay. I don't have the end. Odin, stay right here, Odin. 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 Hey. Get that get your ridge line underneath your end here. Get your zipper. He's sneaking off because he thinks he sees something over there. Probably barking at one of my cats. He he gets confused and doesn't realize it's his cat and he goes to chase it off the property and then he figures out it's his cat and everything's okay. Causes the cat momentary panic because it's not sure why it's being chased. But <laughs> tell you what, this ridgeline organizer gets in the way a lot too. Okay, now. I guess that looks all right. Not entirely sure if there was a wrong way to do that. It does look like it's pulling a little bit over there uh, on that side. So I'm going to try flipping this. I don't know if this is the right way. What's going on here? So I'm going to see if I got that right by chance or if it makes a difference if I switch this around. So let's do that. I'll fast forward through a lot of this so you guys don't have to struggle with it. Okay. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is flip this whole thing over, put the shiny side of the fabric up, and we'll see if it makes a difference. Again, making sure our ridge line is underneath the top cover. ends at the same time.
that actually looks better. So, well, yeah. So I'm thinking that it does make a difference. And I'm thinking the way you tell, and this is just guesswork, honestly, is that <coughs> your head would be here near the netting. Um, I'm not entirely sure if that's correct, so if anybody knows and wants to uh, correct me, uh, go ahead and do that, um, and I'll watch some more videos. Again, this is just me kind of fooling around. I've watched some, some previous videos on the hammock, um, but it was a while ago, and I just kind of wanted to get out here and fool around with it myself and see what it was like. So hopefully that wasn't too painful to watch. Um, I'll take a walk around of the hammock uh, with the other camera now. So again, this is not pitched perfectly. Um, I can get in it and try to see how it, how it does, but I don't want to monkey around with it too long because now it's getting dark and it's probably going to be boring for you guys to watch me even stumble around even further. So, so here we are with the top cover. Again, that's uh, Brilliant Blue, I believe 1.6 Hexon. And the titanium gray top cover. So, and I've got the zippers here. One, All right, here's the zipper here. So you gotta get your zipper pulls out. So division zipper again on both sides there. So you can get out for either way. Come around the other side. And zipper here. Okay, so let me uh, try getting in and see what happens. All right, let's try to get in here without damaging myself or the hammock. Of course, you're not gonna be able to see me because I'm gonna have the top cover on. <laughs> Probably a little too high for me. Oh, well, that's not too bad, actually. <laughs> I think that was just my host. I probably should have brought the camera in with me. Uh. I'm kind of laying on my phone right now. So <coughs> my microphone set up. Odin, come on, buddy. This is why Odin doesn't go in the hammock with me. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't like this. All right. So let me try getting in here. See, that's a little too high for my sit height, but for now, I want to leave it alone. Because the problem is, I'm so short that my sit height is so low that my underquilt is dangerously close to the ground. So. Okay, Odin Daddy's gonna have to get in here. Back up. Good boy. You just be a good boy right there. And shoot, my other zipper's away. <laughs> Whew. That's gonna take some practice. Okay, so my head end is over here. Now, ideally, you would be where the pull-outs are. 
Here's your head. And where your other clothes are. And your feet. So, these are 11 foot hammocks. So a short person like me should have plenty of room. Just a matter of getting everything just, just right. I already got stuff inside here, leaves. So that's plenty up off my face if I need to. So here's my vent over here. You can see it. Here's my vent. And you can put your peak shelf up there or down, down at the other end. So if anybody notices that I've done something terribly wrong here, give me a holler. So here's your clips. My zipper's not zipped on this side. There we go. All right, so you got your inter interior clips there for uh, clipping various items too. And Dutch says he's got more stuff coming out. The clips go all the way on the outside there. If you can see them. Zipper, clip, clip. The peak clip will clip around your uh, suspension up there. Uh, when you gather them, you have to take it apart. I'll do that at some point. And uh, Dutch uh, might, uh, if you ask him if you order one, they may put it on there for you uh, if you don't want to monkey with it. Uh, your peak, peak bag will clip here and here, I believe. Uh, but we'll get to that later. There's my original line organizer. I've never had one with the top cover on it like this, so that's interesting. That seems to be okay, so I'm thinking that's on there the right way. Again, I don't know if it makes a difference. Um, Okay. Now, one of the things I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these. I left these on. They don't come installed, but I had taken it out to look at it and I put them on. Uh, these tie outs, I'm not going to leave them on when I pack it up because. Um, they got tangled all up in the suspension, so. Hopefully I'm still recording audio here. I'm going to zipper this up all the way. After I dump all the stuff out of it. I'm always cautious getting in and out of these things because I'm afraid to tear in the fabric because I, I really, it seems like this stuff is just so thin that it just doesn't seem like it should hold all the weight that I'm throwing around in there. So this is rated well over my weight capacity. I'm, I'm like 185 and this is rated, I don't know, I'll have to check, but it's rated at least 100 pounds more than that, if not more. Um, and the other fabric, the other weight, the highest weight, is rated even more, but it's a little heavier, so I didn't uh, get that one. I'm not crazy weight conscious, but a lot of little strands of loose um, on the webbing here. I don't know. What that's about, but okay. So I've got both of those off. Now I'm just gonna get my bishop bag ready to go.
and you can, I'll show you, I think, uh, you can fit all of this stuff in the bag. So the hammock itself and top cover and the bug net will all fit in the bag. Usually you wouldn't need, you wouldn't need both of them um, in the bag, but want to do because you weren't sure what the situation was. I apologize for the mic noise you're going to get here. One thing I would have suggested to Dutch is the carabiners and the continuous loops on the end are the same color. I would suggest most people um, most people have their their uh, hopefully you can see me over there um, head end head end to carabiner or, head, or a continuous loop or both a different color from their foot end so that when they set the hammock up they don't have to monkey around trying to figure out which which way is which and a hammock that is switchable like this one I think that'd be even more important so that'd be just one uh, suggestion I'd make to Dutch so there's the hammock um, left my steak at the ground I always do that So peak shelf <coughs> and the storage bag for the <coughs> top cover. One of the reasons I switched to using um, Dutch's hookworms on my tarp was because with one of the methods I use, your line stays with your stake. And I was forever leaving my stakes behind. Uh, it's got some disadvantages in that the elastic, <coughs> if, you're, if your line comes off your um, stake, or if your stake pulls out rather of the ground with this with the other system, uh, that turns your turns your stake into a projectile that's headed straight for your tarp. So that's the downside to it. <coughs> uh, keep the stake separate. I'm gonna stuff the peak bag and I'm gonna put the peak bag in this bag just so I have everything together. And then I'm gonna try to stuff both of these in here. I think I did it in my unboxing video. I think I pulled that off, but let's see. So, peak bag, and top cover storage bag, bug net. So there it is. That is the Dutchware Chameleon hammock, top cover, bug net, peak shelf, and ridgeline organizer. Beetle buckles. Ooh, I probably could go in there, but uh, let's see. Most people like to keep their suspension separate from their. Yeah, especially if it's wet, you have a crazy amount of line here, of strap here. So um, I would think that would accommodate most uh, places. I mean, if you've got some real old growth trees, you might uh, run into problems. Yeah, I think that's going to be, I'm not even going to try to put that in the bag. I think that's going to be pushing it. Um, oh, I didn't put my, I didn't put my, uh, tie outs in, but uh, that's going to be another thing to keep an eye out for. If you take them off of the hammock, um, maybe throw them inside uh, before you zipper it up, because that's going to be an easy thing to to uh, lose. Again, beetle buckle. Figure this out here. 
you put your thumb on the anchor and pull. When it's this way, it won't move. Dutch has a good video on it. Watch that. <laughs> it's a, he's got a better... I think he actually has a cameraman going there. This is a really difficult without a cameraman. I'm not sure how some people do it. But with practice, maybe I'll get a little better. So, there's the beetle buckles. Again, my tie-outs. These things are very prone to snagging because you've got those hooks. You've got, you've got three hooks. Two, four hooks, actually, all together. Um, somebody's got a good technique for tie-out management. Give me a Give me a comment down below. So I will stuff those in here. But we're reaching the capacity of this bag, so um, I wouldn't monkey with adding the uh, suspension to this. Put all that back into my Koto Paxi. Moves on 18 liter bag. Got this from uh, Karen. One of the better boxes from Karen. I'm gonna throw that in there. I'm gonna go get the other camera and whatnot. So I guess that's it. We're losing the sun here, so. Um, Thanks for watching. Again, any suggestions, comments, questions, concerns, throw them in the, uh, down below. I'll throw up the links. Check us out on Facebook. Uh, search North Country Outdoor Guys. I post there as well. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again real soon.